Dead and Hip Hop album review. Prem Rock Load Bearing Crow's Feet. Um, this is the first time that we actually review Prem Rock on the YouTube channel, so we're going to give you a little bit of bio, but Mike Seatown got that one today. Prem Rock is a New York-based rap artist. Um, he's been putting in work for a good decade now. And um, yeah, he just came off the back of a project with Curly Castro called Shrapnel, which I reviewed on my channel. So go check that out, youtube.com forward slash M-Y-K-E-C-T-O-W-N. And uh, yeah, he's back with a new solo album. So FIFA, what did you think of this? Um, I like the tempo. I like the pacing of this album. Um, I liked how it was jazzy mm -hmm. in a lot of places. And I liked his tone on like his the way he raps, you know what I'm saying? I like it a little bit slower, not something that I would be like, oh my God, I gotta go listen to. But if it's recommended to me, if one of y'all told me, hey, go listen to this, or obviously doing it for a review, yeah, objectively, this is a damn good project. Yeah, he's definitely different from some of the other people on, on the label. Yeah. Like, he definitely, he's definitely- On backwards? I think so. I think he sounds a little different from, from some of the other guys. Like definitely. Billy Woods and the Lucid? Yeah, I, I think, think he sounds he different from perfect. Yeah. He, he, no, 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 I'm not saying it yeah, doesn't fit. It, I don't think he sounds different. I, I, don't, I don't think, it, I, yeah. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying the way he rhymes is different. I don't think it's as off kilter as they are. Yeah, he's not he's not that off kiltered. Yeah. You're talking about a rap his rap style. Yes. Yeah. Okay. He's complimentary, but he's not the same as the other guys. He's a little different. Like the track next left. You know what I'm saying? Like hmm. very simple hook. You know, nothing crazy or nothing. Left, that's me. That's me. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like I like that. I like a lot of the western sounding sounds on here. You know, like uh, the track Joel Olstein. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like yeah, that that's, guitar that's on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I re that's why I said like the the thing that just stood out to me after the first time I listened to it was the pacing on here, the beats, how it sounds like mm -hmm. it's somewhat mellow but vibey at the same time. Not really boom bapish, not like traditional boom bapish. So I, I I liked it, and I know he has quotables, but I'm not the quotable guy. You know what I'm saying? But I liked it overall. I'm not like over the hills in love with it, but it's definitely something I would revisit. It's so pal It's palatable for you. Yes. It, it has replay value. Yeah, it it yeah. definitely has some strong replay value for me. How much did I fuck up not, not listening to Shrapnel? A lot. I figured. A lot. <laughs> I figured. It's, it's, yeah. it's, when it got to that, I was like, mm -hmm. oh, oh, this is definitely some of Prim Rock and Curly Castro's best work. Mm. But, yeah, uh, yeah, you definitely fucked up. I, I, yeah, listening to this, I, I realized only then that they actually did an album together. I was like, oh, fuck oh, so that shit. Don't watch my channel either. <laughs> <laughs> I, I share all your shit. You share it, but your ass don't. Hey, <laughs> <watch it. laughs> man, it's still support. Can't yeah, like, damn. Yeah, like, at least got I got it. the retweet. Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> right. <laughs> but nah, this was this was good, man. I really enjoyed this. Um, and I fucks with Prim Rock, um, even though I didn't listen to the Shrapnel. Album. <laughs> Do you really? <laughs> Do you remember when we were trying to get a show for him? Uh -uh. I do remember because I remember his it's uh one of his albums made my top ten one of the years mm -hmm. we start I think it was 2011. This was 2012. He was on tour with Open Mike Eagle. It was Prim Rock, Open Mike Eagle, and Willie Green. We were trying to get a show for him in Atlanta. It didn't. It didn't go. Well. <gasps> mm. Oh, we were trying we, hard. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Oh, oh shit. my god. This is with, I know um, it sounded familiar. Yeah, I remember that shit. Yeah, man. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. Been man. talking to Prim Rock for a long fucking yeah, time. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Now nah, he's really good, man. And I've I, I've I've always enjoyed his music. That's why I asked you that question because I I knew I had a really really strong feeling that that album was really fucking good. Um. But yeah, I mean, you know, this this is crazy because I had this thing on repeat. I really don't don't know what the fuck you be talking about. It's, it's <laughs> I'll be honest. I ain't gonna sit here in front trying to even pick apart like what's going on, what what he's saying, um, this, that, and the other. But because I was looking for lyrics for this, I was oh yeah, yeah, I was looking for some like lyrics on this because I was trying to figure out like on some of the songs like what was he really talking about and trying to catch stuff. But yeah, yeah it's it was, it's it's, it's yeah. dense at times. Yeah, um, it is. But. You know, I think that's one of the things that, you know, that I appreciate about it mm -hmm. um, because you just never get it on the first listen. But I think it's, it's, you know, like with the music and the sound of it and the way he raps and stuff like that, I think is is good enough to where you can still audibly listen to it. And at the same time, 
with repeated lists and start to kind of decipher shit that he's saying here and there. Mm -hmm. um, but Joel Osteen was definitely one of my um, favorite tracks on here. Definitely, I, installment plan was my was man. My shit. That shit right yeah, there. That was my shit yeah, right there. yeah. I think the first one that really stood out to me was Remorse. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, when that shit came on, when that yeah. beat hit, and that shit, I was like, "Yo, this shit is about to be just fucking a dope." Throw away. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then I think it was on Curly Castro. Is that the one where he was? He had the um, the Wu, Wu references. Because I thought it was Apollo Kids at first, but I think, and I don't know if it was. It was probably Apollo Kids because that's a play on the Ghostface. Ghost yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. I'm gonna have to look it up. I don't have the lyrics, but I think Curly Castro made a, a Wu reference on that one to the Apollo kids or to he one of the Ghostface shit yeah. or whatever. But, um, you know, another dope one, Ken, too, for me, um, yeah. that felt like in line with all of the joints that you was talking about, mm -hmm. Prairie Burn. Mm -hmm. Again, another, like, it, it felt That sounded like some Wu-Tang shit to me yeah, exactly. for some reason. That beat did. Oh, the yeah. beat? The beat did. Mm -hmm. The beat sounded like some Wu-Tang mm -hmm. shit to me. I like yeah, that, that's really? another dope yeah, one. Yeah, that beat did. Hmm. Yeah. I, I, th I think it's the guitar and the strings that they're using. But I'm I'm not, I'm not DJ 430 or or even producer 430. So he I, produced I don't know. that one. I think that's the only one he yeah, produced on yeah. this whole thing. Oh really? I think, he I did think so. Too. Did he do? Hold on. But that's crazy because if he did remorse as well, he he produced he co-produced remorse, uh, Prime Rock. Oh, he did. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, this shit was dope. I I remember when Mike uh, texted to I was like, man, that name looked familiar. But then I realized he was on. We reviewed it on uh, Uncom Uncommon NASA's album Telephone. He was on Telephone mm -hmm. album. So when I when I heard him, I was like, "Oh, that's 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 this dude." I said, "Okay," because I, I you know since then I haven't been following this music or anything like that. So this is my first time listening to a full project from him. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely yeah. I de when I when I was listening to something, like, okay, yeah, this is definitely uh, this is definitely in the realms of Elucid and, and and Billy Woods type of vibe that hmm. that I like or whatever. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, he does rap different. I'm not saying yeah, that yeah. he raps. Yeah. Like just like them, but mm -hmm. like hearing the type of production he goes over, I can definitely hear Billy Woods on either one of these. Songs. No, I feel like, that. I perfectly, feel that. like if it's perfect. Hey, bro, I need a lyric book from you or something because I need to <laughs> definitely read some of the shit you was rapping about was definitely going over my head. But I like, I like the fact that you sound very comfortable over these beats. These airy beats. Shout out to Denmark Bessie. He produced mm -hmm. two tracks on there, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and dope. shout out to Small Professor. You know, he did an album with Guilty Simpson as well. So I was I like, know. oh shit. Got him on here as well, so yeah. But I like the fact that the production did sound. It was, you know, it was. How can I say it's like samey, but very, but it was variety at the same time. If it makes sense, I don't even know how how to explain that. But mm -hmm. but yeah, man, like this this album was good. It was definitely quick, straight to the point. I definitely feel like he was talking about some deep deep shit that I really want to figure out what he was talking about. I'd like to do a decipher with him on some of his lyrics on some of his albums, like uh, Soft Machinery. Um, I thought Friends was um, another one where I was like, yo, I don't know if it's like a deeper meaning what he's talking about on there. Shortest Story Ever. The Shortest Story Ever was that another was one. That mm -hmm. shit was fucking phenomenal, man. That's that's another dope ass joint. But yeah, overall, man, I, I definitely enjoyed this album, man. Like, I'm glad we, like I said, I, this is my first time listening to a full project by him. So, I, you know, I didn't know what to expect doing a FIFA line right here. I didn't know what to expect going into this. <laughs> but yeah, this, this shit was dope, man. This shit was good. Sounds like hyperbole, but I, I honestly think this is this is his best work. Hmm. Um, I don't really talk to Primrock regularly or anything like that, but it sounds like something switched between this and his last project. Not Shrapnel, but his last solo album because it seems like he got very, very, very serious. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, he's always had that like, you know, hard beats, hard rhymes type of deal. Mm -hmm. But on this one, it just sounds different. Like he sounds very deep. He sounds very focused. And he, it, I don't know, he just sounds like something happened yeah. that, that switched him. But, um, but yeah, man, uh, next left, that Denmark Vassy beat is fucking dope as hell. But I love that hook. I love that hook. The next left up ahead, that's me. And it just sounds so somber it's almost got like a cough feel to it mm -hmm. at times but yeah his lyrics are definitely extremely dense yeah um, the joel o Olst i always fuck his name up. joel austin austin yeah. is it austin yeah. austin whatever his austin. Name. i would say dude. austin yeah but austin. uh yeah joe austin whatever um i'm not familiar with aj suede um but i really liked the way he sounded mm. on this shit. He said something about couldn't even make it as a Walmart greeter. I was like, God damn, that's just, <laughs> that's, that's, that's just, that's rude. hard boy. That's just rude. <laughs> and it was, it was bulletproof wallets. 
That song you were thinking about? Yeah, it was on it was on Joel Osteen, but it was on that song where he said Bulletproof Wallet, some, some, some. Oh, but that's, that's Ghostface, that's Ghostface yep. album title. Yep. It was his third album title. Okay. But I got mixed up because I heard it on that, but I remember Apollo Kids, and that's where I got them kind of mixed up. No, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. I could yeah. see, I, I I didn't catch that, but yeah. I, that totally makes sense. But I think it was the AJ Sway guy. I don't know which one it was, but yeah. AJ anyway. Sway is dope. Um, but yeah, I might have to look him up because I'm not familiar with him, but uh, Curly Castro sounded really good on that song, on that song, and yeah, the whole run where he's uh, where Primrock was like uh, Joe Joel Alstein locked the church doors, uh, barricaded the first floors, uh, but it still turned the other cheek. Uh, mm. Up uh, something like Up Shit's mm-hmm. Creek or whatever. I forget what the rest of it was, but the way he related that to like you know political leaders, I was mm-hmm. like, damn, that is such a dope angle. But, um, so he never was on that tip before, like on this. No, he was, he was, but okay. it just, it just, I don't know what it is about this one, hmm. and that's why I kind of disagree. I know what Rod was saying. That's why I kind of disagreed with it because this is like his previous albums. Yeah. I would have agreed with Rod. I'm like, okay. eh, it doesn't really, it doesn't really sound like the rap style that these guys use. But mm-hmm. with this one, I feel like his raps got even more dense. Mm-hmm. Like he's always kind of gone over my head, but not as much as this. Okay, like yeah. this one, I really felt myself sitting down really trying to study the lyrics and see like what is he talking about here um the shortest story ever was really dope i feel like henry canyons had the verse of the out al- like the guest verse mm-hmm. of the album he just sounded really dope that loyalty uh loyalties for sale unused that that hook was just fucking incredible but um yeah man i mean i feel like this is a great album i walked away with more quotables than 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 normal with this one ain't no restart can't replace memory with 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 free labor and cheap parts i feel like that is an incredible incredible line but um my favorite line in the whole album probably is where he said uh designers of a crutch are always asking you how you're holding up which is a hundred percent true if you're looking at it from across the board when it mm-hmm. comes to any type of crutch. So yeah, man, I feel like this shit, if you fuck with Billy Woods, if you fuck with Elucid, if you fuck with any of that, you know, pink Sifu, if you fuck, fuck with uh Mock Hami, any of that mm-hmm. shit, I feel like this is right up it's your really, alley. Yeah. And I'm hoping that this is the album that really pushes him to the forefront because his his rap style is really, really, really dope. And and the mm-hmm. mixing. Really green. Perfect. Shout out yeah. to him, man, because like this is the best he's ever sounded. Yeah. Like everything was fucking mixed perfectly. But yeah, man, this is a dope project. You know, um, as, as you was spewing out that list of artists that this kind of sounds sort of like, mm-hmm. the first person came to my head was Makami. I was like, I hope he's yeah. Makami, because because th- especially like on Soft Machinery, that mm-hmm. could have been mm-hmm. on fucking Pray for Haiti, bro. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know yes. what I'm saying? Like yes. that fit yes. that aesthetic perfect. <laughs> yes. And I think that's the reason why I like this. And you know, I didn't I didn't talk about it because like a lot of the lyrics, they didn't hit me. Like I know they went over my head, and I'm like, yeah. I know this nigga talking about some shit, bro. Mm-hmm. But it's too it. it I would have to literally sit and st- like I would have to write down the shit or genius the shit, you know what I'm saying? But I know I know dope when I hear it, and I know this is dope. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Even if I don't understand every fucking thing that's getting thrown at me, mm-hmm. I know that this is dope. And yeah, it no, sounds this is heavy album. This is definitely yep. a heavy album. You yeah. mentioned was Prairie Burn the one that you guys were that's talking about? That shit is fucked. I said okay. that shit is dope. And he, okay. he produced that one. It was like I said, it got like a Wu Tang feel to it. Yeah, you know what? When when y'all said that, I was thinking of if on a winter's night. Mm. That one's a good one too. Yeah, <laughs> it is. A, it is that's definitely close yeah, out the close out. Yep, yep, hundred percent. Yeah, so I got that. I got those two mixed up. Um, but yeah, man, I think this was, um, it's interesting because I was, I played like four or five times in a row and I was, I was But sitting, it's that quick you can do it though. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it's still yeah. trying to pick up what the fuck is being said and yes. what the fuck is going on. Yes. And, um, but still kind of easing into the album and I was sitting there, I was, uh, what was it? Uh, Saturday mm-hmm. I was playing it and, um, sitting there just playing Madding and I just had it in. So I had like one ear on with the headphones and then I had this playing on speaker and just vibing, man. I say, what? I said, you can't do that. Listen to these guys. Nah, nah, you really can't. <laughs> you really can't. But I think, I think that also kind of speaks to like the quality of the production as well, because I was still able to kind of listen to it you know, from sonically and enjoy what I was hearing. Um, and then sometimes just when you're not like actively thinking about what's going on, sometimes mm-hmm. something that, you know, uh, passively hits you. But 
but now it's a very 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 definitely uh easy listen and um and highly enjoyable and i think uh mike yell yeah, that that line that we when you mentioned um loyalty for sale that was that was um because he had a couple of other ones dignity the, for sale yeah Lord yeah yeah used. yep yep that was one of the first ones that another one that hit me um you know on one of my first listens so mm-hmm. yeah yeah no i fussed with this all right so for me give me a uh, remorse next left give me uh prairie born joel osteen soft machinery uh my favorite tracks are joel osteen remorse Death on the installment plan, Next Left, and The Shortest Story Ever. Next Left, Death on the Installment Plan, Joel Osteen, The Shortest Story Ever, If on a Winter's Night. Remorse, Next Left, Joel Osteen, Prairie Burn. Ooh, man. Um, Mm -hmm. I know. It's that last one. (laughs) I think I'm gonna have to go with the shortest story ever. Cause that Henry Henry Canyon's verse was just fucking dope. Prem Rock, if you're watching, dope album, bro. Dope album. This is my first time I listened to a full project from you. So I don't really have much to compare it to, but this is a solid start for me in terms of digging into your catalog. So looking forward to whatever you do next. Prem Rock, if you're watching. Um, yeah, man, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this album. Um, you know, I love how re- reflective it is, somber um you know uh dense to me at times uh and how much of an easy listen is it's like a lot packed in here that i enjoy and um and yeah like i mentioned earlier you know i listen to this four or five times in a row easy um and you know that's a good thing so that's that's high replay value and um and i felt like with each track you know i was i was it was a line or something that was to you know stand out to me um so yeah so uh, great album. Uh, I, I am definitely a uh, fuck with your work. And, you know, I, I realized, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I fucked up by not listening to the last one that you and Curly did, but I'm going to mm-hmm. take care of that uh, ASAP. So, mm-hmm. uh, so yeah, I'm going to get on that. So apologies on, on that one, my brother, but I got you. Yes, uh, Primo, I keep you watching. Uh, great job on the album. I'm going to go on your band camp. Which I'm on here right now, and I see you got some uh, work on here. I'm gonna check out your other work and support you and, and, and purchase this album that we just reviewed, of course, and then um, check out your other work as well, as well, because this is my first time diving into your albums. And man, you, it's heavy. It's heavy. This bad boy is, is heavy and, and, and deep. So yeah, man, I like that. I like the fact that I'm hearing shit, and I'm like, yo, what the fuck is he talking about? But I love the fact. I love the way you rap. I love your rapping style. I love your production choices with this. I'm glad you tapped in with different producers to kind of help you get a nice good consistent sound throughout the album so uh good job man looking forward to seeing what you do next prim rock um i'm glad this was able to make it to the table man i'm, I'm glad i we all got to talk about this one because this is this is your best shit this is definitely your best shit um best lyrics best beats your approach to the songs is um i don't know it's just more poignant than than um some of your other projects and i've always been a fan of your stuff um as you know but this one i feel like this is definitely um definitely high up there but uh yeah man i I don't know what to say like i think your your work on shrapnel was fantastic but this one just felt a lot more personal so i was sucked into it a lot more but um yeah i'm really interested to see what you do next but great job on this album